What is up YouTube? It's I Can Swim here with another great tech tutorial made easy. So in today's video, I'm very excited to be bringing you the external hard drive support on PS4. Now, this may seem like not as big of a deal as I'm making it seem, but it's important to remember that when PlayStation released the PS4 console, the hard drives aren't exactly designed to, to store more than a few games. So, you run out of space really quickly. So, with this update, it's going to allow you to add as much as 8 terabytes, which is 8,000 gigabytes in change, to your console for storage, which will greatly increase the performance of your console. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. So... Um, I have my Western Digital hard drive. There are quite a few different ones you can use. Um, and I'll link them all in the description. Just be sure that you're getting one that's no more than a few years old. Because when you get into that kind of thing, more than a few years, you're actually going to run into firmware conflicts and the PS4 might not be able to read the firmware of an older hard drive. So, but that will all be linked and you can read into it at your own leisure. So, let's jump right into this. So, Sony has made it easy and that all you're going to need is your hard drive and your console, of course. So, first thing we're going to do here is simply plug in the external drive. Now, you're going to see that the light on the front, right there, is going to... Um, flash solid when it's detected by the console. Nothing's going to happen on the console per se, just the light's going to come on steady indicating that it's been detected on the operating system. So the next thing we're going to do is go up and navigate over to settings and scroll down to devices. And once in here, we can see we have Bluetooth devices, audio devices, a few other things, and then we have USB storage devices. This is the setting we want to be clicking on. And from here, um, as, assuming your external hard drive is in good shape and not corrupt or anything like that, it will pop up here automatically with the make and models. Mine's a Western Digital 10A2, which is just the model number. So what we're going to do is click on it. And as you can see, mine has two options. You'll get one of two screens. You will either get the screen you see here, or you will also get one that just simply says, um, format this device or format drive and what we want to do is if you have this screen okay so if you have the other screen that's actually easier you're just going to click format it'll be the only option available if you have this screen though what we're going to do is hit start like the options button and as we can see here there are two options format is xbat and format is extended storage xbat is the default um, file system that's used in PS4, but if we go down to format as extended drive, it will do all the work for us and already add it to the storage um, capacity of the hard drive, the internal hard drive. So if we do that, it means anything you save will automatically get saved to the external, external drive from here on out, improving your system's performance right away. So this is what we want to do. We're going to click format as extended storage. Applications, blah blah blah. Next, that's what we want to click, and then I'll say it'll delete everything. Just warning you, and click format. And if it's a new drive, it will do this very quickly. Um, if it's an older drive that you're you have stuff on, a make sure it's all backed up in, in another location. And once that's done, you're just gonna click yes again, and it will erase everything on that drive. This might take a little longer. And that's what say, formatting. And we'll just do a quick format. And the important thing to remember with formatting is low-level formatting, which this, with, which consoles and computers do unless otherwise selected and dove into a little deeper, it just writes zeros to the drive. So everything just gets overwritten by uh, zeros, which is still good, still works. But anyway, so once it's been formatted, you'll get this message. Just hit OK. It's letting you know you can now save stuff to it, and it'll all be uh, saved here by default. So when we're done, you can hit OK, and your um, external device is ready to go. Now, let's say you have an application 
or multiple applications on your drive, which is getting pretty full. You want to move them over to allow a little more room, just in case, for whatever reason. Um, usually if you have a little extra room, it'll help with performance of the operating system because it'll allow, allow a page file to be stored on the drive rather than the external drive. It's just, it's tech stuff. It'll make it faster if you have a little bit extra available storage. So what we're going to do here is, uh, once you have your device up and running, if you want to move an application from your internal drive to the external drive, um, we just have to do a few simple steps and it will move over no problem. So what we're going to do is back out of this, we'll go right back to the start screen. And then we're going to go back, just so you guys know the exact um, path to get. So from your home screen, you're going to go back to settings. And we're going to go to storage. And then we're going to go to system storage and applications and it'll show everything you have installed on your internal hard drive so all your games your apps anything else so like pictures videos music all that stuff so we're gonna pick one that we want to move i'm gonna move nhl 17 because to be honest i was a little bit disappointed with it this year um and i'm switching back to FIFA. so probably not gonna be using this that much from here on out so what we're going to do is hit options and move to extended storage. It is literally that easy. And just to finish the example off, we're actually going to move it because I really don't play it as much. So we're going to select that one and click move. And then it's going to prompt you, of course, just in case you changed your mind. But how do you get this far and not, either not know what you're doing or want to go back? But it's up to you. So um, it'll just tell you, you can click OK, and then it's going to do it. This part can take anywhere from three minutes to an hour, depending on the size of the file you're moving. Um, but I'm just going to let this do it. It should be fairly quick, but just in case to keep the length of the video down, I will fast forward and we'll see you in a minute. Alright, so now as we can see, NHL is no longer on our list. Keep in mind, it'll take you back to the internal hard drive list, which is what we are on. This, these are all the games and applications that are stored on the internal drive, as we discovered. So now, to go back and make sure that it's on the external drive, what we can do is go right back to our home screen. Go back to settings. Then we'll go to. Sorry, I did that really quick. We'll do that one more time. So from the main screen, we're going to go up, back to settings. We will go to storage. And now, instead of clicking system storage, we are going to click extended storage. And this is the external drive that we just installed and configured. And as you can see here, we now have NHL 17 saved on uh, the external drive instead of the internal drive. Now, it's important to remember that we can still access the game, play the game, all your information will still be there. It's simply just stored in a different spot. Um, when you boot up and log in and everything, everything, all your data, all your trophies, all your progress, everything is still going to be there. There are no changes to any of your achievements or anything like that. So, just keep that in mind and don't freak out. I, I promise you, all your, everything is fine. And once we're done there, we can, the other thing I wanted to make sure to highlight was you can see, if you didn't know how big your drive hooking up was, it will tell you not only here, but when you actually connect the device, when we go down to USB storage devices, um, when, it, when you plug in and it pops up here, the third line down, 
will show you exactly how big the device is. Now, if it's a thousand, if it's a one terabyte, which is roughly a thousand gigabytes, it will be just under. So between 918, like mine is, and um, like 980. There's always a little bit of storage dedicated for recovery on hard drives. So don't be alarmed if it's a little bit less than a thousand. That is to be expected. But other than that, everything's set up and you are all set. Anything you download from here on out will get saved to the USB, to the external USB device by default. You can change this at your own leisure, leisure, but to keep system performance at its best and for the best possible performance, um, I would strongly recommend you leave it to saving new games to the external drive and keep it that way. But again, totally up to you, just in my opinion, that's what I would do, and it will help your console all around. Anyways, if you like this tutorial and it helped you, don't forget to drop a like. Um, if you're new around here, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, be sure to leave a like, a comment down below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. We'll see you on the next one.